Blender for Noobs. Hello and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this video we're going to be looking at how to use the cursor and the manipulator and things like that to move around within your Blender interface. So let's get started. If you um, are using Blender for kind of the first time or whatever you might have a cube here so I'm going to go ahead and create a cube. Shift A mesh cube. Okay. All right, so what we have here is our 3D manipulator, which shows the Z axis, Y or yes, Y axis and X axis. And of course, if you have something selected like the cube is selected right now, you can use that to move around in your 3D space, which is helpful. And if we hit seven top view. Just to show you a few other ways that you can move your objects around in Blender. G is also a key that uses, is, is considered a move key. So I'm going to hit G. And if you move your mouse around, of course you can move your object around. And you'll notice, if you look over in this view here, in the front view, when I move it around, it's only moving it within that X and Y axis because we're in the top view. If I go to three, right view or side view, whatever you want to call it, and hit G, we're only moving in the Z and Y axis. So that's sometimes help, helpful if you only need to move in the two different uh, axes there. Sometimes when you're working on an object, um, this is, of course a cube is not very complicated, but once you get into more you know, your, your models get more complicated, then this 3D, or your manipulator here, can, can get in the way. So in order to get rid of that, you just come down here and click this, and it disappears. So that way you can come in and say if we were tabbed into edit mode and you're trying to select a certain vertice, sometimes that manipulator get, will get in the way and you can just turn it off. Some people don't like the manipulator in there at all and they don't use it. But you can turn it back on by coming down here, clicking that. And of course you can move your vertices or whatever you have selected. Same thing with your edges. and faces. I just selected in the middle there, that's sort of like a, you can actually get it moving freely. I'm just uh, deselector on my setup, it's the right mouse key to get it to pop back into the place where it's at. So I'm gonna do a control Z undo a few times. just to get the cube back into shape here. And uh, by the way, the Control Z undo is your friend. <laughs> it's your very good friend. And you can set the number levels of undo in your file preferences, but definitely a very important feature to have. So I'm gonna go back into object mode here and select this and just show you a few other things about the um, the manipulator. So we're doing a lot of moving around, but there's a couple of other important things that you can do with the manipulator, and that is uh, things like rotate and scale. So I'm going to go to 7 on the numpad key, top view, and if you do an R and just rotate we're rotating in that view. Um, if I have a side view, of course, you can rotate in that view. Same type of thing. If you do an S, which is scale, and move the mouse, scales it up and down. And all those things that you can do 
with the object as it is, you can do an edit mode with the faces and with your edges and all that. So I'm going to tab in edit mode and I'm going to go over to select vertices. Actually, let's select edges because you can't really rotate or scale a vertice or a vertex itself. So I'm going to choose edge and let's go set on top view and do an R. And you can see you can start to distort that by rotating it. And you can do S and freely scale that. So if you look at it like this, you can kind of see what it's doing. Not something that's normally done, but you can see that how you could take um, different components of the model and, and use the same, do the same thing with it. So I'm going to select faces. Same thing, if we do R, you can rotate the face itself, scale it, and you can also do G, move, if you wanted to. So you're really moving the face around, which is dragging the rest of the geometry around. So probably what I recommend is just like, you know, just get used to doing these kind of movements on a basic cube. You know, pick something and then start, you know, just see see how it how it reacts when you do the certain things just to get used to it. I know it sounds fairly basic, I guess, but if you're just learning Blender, then it's something that uh, you definitely need to get used to. I'm going to tab back into object mode. So if you look now at the object, say if we go to the side view or right view, we can see that the manipulator is actually not located in the center anymore because we did all that, um, that moving around. So how do you get that back to where it needs to be? Well, you can hit the T key to bring up your tool menu and you can go to origin and say origin to geometry and that kind of centers it back to where it needs to be. Why is that important? Well it becomes important when you start to have to rotate things based on the, the center of the object. So if we go into side view or whatever and we rotate it's now going to rotate around the center which as you do other kind of models you'll see why that's important. Um, so that's the manipulator. You also see this little life uh, raft or life tube looking thing, which is, you can't really zoom in on it, but it's a circle and it's red and white. And that is called the 3D cursor. And when I was first learning Blender, it's like, you know, it's like that thing would always be in my way. And I'm like, why is that there? And if you right click, it actually moves it around. And it's just like a pain to be, you know, why is it there? Why don't they get rid of it? <laughs> it's because I didn't understand really what it was for. And once you understand what it's for, it becomes quite necessary, um, necessary to be there. So what is it for? Well, it's, it's for placement of your 3D objects, basically. Um, and again, as you get into more into modeling, it becomes more and more important. But right now, basically, I can show you if we create, let's do a shift A, and let's just create a UV sphere. Bam! So you can see it creates it around the center of the 3D cursor. But normally you want the 3D cursor to be right in the center of your grid, and you'll see why that's important as you, like I say, as you do other models. But in order to get it back to where it needs to be, and, you know, if you accidentally moved it around, like I do all the time, just do a shift S and say cursor to center and it puts it back where it needs to be. I'm going to X delete this object and do a shift A, create, let's create a cylinder and you'll see it creates it right in the center of that. X to delete. Okay, so what else is that 3D cursor good for? Well, it's also used as a reference point. I'm just going to move this out of the way. 
There we go, seven, top view. See if I can come up with something here that makes sense really quick. Um, if I do a shift A and create a cylinder and say I move it up here and let's scale it down. So it looks something like that. So let's pretend in the top view we're making, uh, this is a bolt on a wheel. And we want bolts to go all the way around the wheel. So instead of trying to like create the bolt, duplicate it and move it around and try to get it you know, where it's supposed to be, we can tab into edit mode and hit our T menu. And this is not something that you know, I necessarily want you to remember. I just want you to see what it's doing in reference to the 3D cursor. So I'm going to use the spin tool and see how it's starting to go around. And I can change the angle, move that up so I can have like it go completely around. So that's pretty cool, right? And the reason it's going around in a, in a nice circle is because it's referencing this 3D cursor. If the 3D cursor was up here, so if I undo that, I didn't want to undo that much. Shift Control Z redo. Okay, so let's just take this 3D cursor and let's move it um, closer like that and do a spin. And as you might have guessed, this is what you're going to get. But anyway, that's kind of a, a way to understand why that 3D cursor is important. Um, not used all the time, but when it is used, it is really important. So I'm just going to B box select all this stuff. Next, delete. Oops, tab out of edit mode. X, delete. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete this cube for a second. Make another one. I'll scale it down and just hit S and I'm just moving the mouse and when I go S Y to scale along, along the X axis okay and 7 top view just want to show you okay to I guess to you know what I'd like you to bring away from this video is um, as far as the basic manipulations you can do with your your model your objects and that is G move S to scale and R to rotate. Those are the main things that we're looking at here. And when you do, when you uh, do those functions, you can also add numbers to them in order to change them the way, change them in a more organized way. Like if I wanted to rotate this 45 degrees, then I would do R 45 and click select, and there it is. I'm going to control Z that, undo that. Okay. So if I want to like um, scale this object along the x axis, make it twice as big, I can do SX2 and hit enter. And say I wanted to move this over three units, I can uh, do GX3. And it moved, moved it over. From this position, one, two, three. So that's just a more pre precise way of um, moving and manipulating your object around. And one of the things that I had to kind of get used to uh, speaking about rotation um, is to know which axis to rotate and how to rotate. So if you if you're thinking that uh, if you're looking down on it and you want it to rotate that way. And you want to use like you want to go 45 degrees. For some reason, and it may be just me, but anyway, I, I had this thing in my head where I couldn't kind of quite wrap my head around that I needed to go around the z-axis. Uh, it kind of makes sense that you do because of the way it is, but just think about when you're rotating which of these manipulator arrows you're going around. So if you wanted to move it around this way, it's going to be, of course, the, the uh, y-axis. So you can say um, 
you know, R X 90, something like that, or around the Y axis. I just picture it rotating around that axis, so R Y 90 there. And I, you know, I guess pretty self explanatory, but for some reason it took me a while to just kind of know that as second nature. Another thing about the, uh, the manipulator tool is right now you can see it's selected in where you can just move it around that way. You can actually also change it to the rotation manipulator and just pick the uh, different axes that you're rotating on. I don't ever use this manipulator, but you know, if it's something you'd like to use, you can use that. You can use the scale manipulator. So you can scale in the different uh, axes. Again, that's not something I ever use. I just do it by the keyboard. But that's what those those uh, settings are for. The other settings here, we get into like the uh, pivot center and things like that. That's going to come later. But basically, what I'd like you to get out of this is is to you know to know about your main object that you're working with, without even going into the edit mode or anything like that. You know how to move scale and rotate your object because that's like a, just like knowing the vertex and the edges and the faces it's a basic building block of modeling so um, you know just take an object and just practice moving it around see what it does see what the manipulators do and practice that and and you know as you go along modeling that that'll again become second nature to you and that's what speeds up your modeling once you learn that, those basics and start uh, really taking off with that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.